Hello, this is Angela Anderson, and in this video I'm showing you a time lapse of the Love Summer Art Project that I did. It is a swallowtail butterfly, and my original video uh, is an hour and a half long. So this in this video is uh, sped up eight times faster than the original. Um, so that you can watch it in case you don't want to sit through a whole hour and a half of me painting. You can see the sped up version and I thought it might interest some folks. So I thought I'd offer a second video with just the sped up content and not the actual tutorial included. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping that uh, what I'm looking at is kind of lagging so I'm hoping that when your video, when you're viewing it, it's not got any glitchiness and it's a smooth uh, video. So you can see that I painted um, the lines in first in the background, and then I painted over the top of that with the yellow. And that just softens up those lines and we'll be able to see them a little bit through that are through our paint but most of them will be covered up but I like to kind of have that ghost uh, ghosting of the other color showing through and this is my first layer of the stripes that I'm putting in now on top of the yellow and I'm using like a light brown or like a, a brownish color it's not quite black and this this again it will be an undercoat and we'll put um, darker black over the top of it later, but it'll be our under layer, or our first layer of the stripe. So as you can see, I'm just kind of comparing and slowly filling in all of the stripes on this butterfly. It's quite a complicated butterfly. I'm not exactly sure why I chose it to demonstrate because it took it actually the original video was five hours from the time that I sketched it until the, the finish of the video of the painting part so I had to split up the original video into two parts the drawing part and then the painting part and even with all the editing, it was still, I think, 40 minutes for the drawing and an hour and a half for the painting portion, and that's with sections sped up. So um, these paintings are quite labor intensive, um, but I, I just love all the detail in the butterflies, and I love the different colors that they come in and all of that. So it was really fun for me to be able to share it with people. Um, and I hope some of you do try it, even though it is a little bit complicated, you can always simplify it, um, change it to a different kind of butterfly. Most of the, uh, you know, the markings will be different with different butterflies, but basically you could use the same techniques that I'm using and just change the colors if you wanted to do something different or a little bit more simplified. And I did um, actually film and edit uh, and upload today uh, earlier a blue morpho butterfly um, one of my subscribers requested it and I was happy to do a little a short demonstration on an easier butterfly painting and it was also sped up so. and now I'm putting a second layer of yellow you can see it's, um, it'll brighten up the butterfly and I'm going inside of all of the little sections of the wings to brighten each section up uh, and give it some highlights on the wings. So. And here again I can cover over any kind of like little uh, lines that maybe I want to cover over that I've already done on the background. So now I'm adding some spots with the yellow. 
and I got up close so you could see the detail because it's quite detailed. And I was just counting them, making sure that I got the right number spots on there and that they lined up with the stripes in the wings. And I'll do two coats of yellow on these spots since they're going over such a dark color um, with the yellow. I'm using a, a lot of white in my with my yellow or an opaque yellow um, to cover over. And now I'm using black. Um, I might have had a little bit of brown in there, I'm not sure, to add another layer of depth to the color on the black stripes in the black parts of the wing. <coughs> And then I'm getting a small brush and putting in a few teeny tiny little lines over the top of where some of my veins would be in the wings. And now I'm also putting in some dark, dark uh, French sienna stripes and details in the body. I really fussed with the body on this butterfly more than some of the other ones. I don't know why it just didn't want to come together for me. And, um, you know, if that happens, sometimes what I'll do is I didn't have the luxury of doing this cause I was trying to film it, but sometimes when I'm having trouble with the painting and it's just not coming together, what I'll do is I will stop messing with it because when you get frustrated, you can really, a painting can go downhill real fast. So if you're getting frustrated and you don't know what to do, sometimes what I'll do is just set it aside, stop painting altogether, and put the painting up in my living room or somewhere that I know I'm going to see it quite often. And then I will just kind of look at it every chance that I get. You know, when I go walk through, when I'm sitting down, I'll just, whatever, um, check out the painting and look for things that are bugging me like just kind of try to find the flaws in it um, and usually when I've kind of stepped away from it for a little while and I've got fresh eyes on it um, usually the problem becomes real clear real fast like I for some reasons when you're sitting right in front of it working on it sometimes you just can't see them the flaws and um, but when you kind of step away a little bit and come back to it, then you can see what you need to fix. And usually it's a real quick fix and then you can move on and be done. So I, I um, almost always will, even if I think a painting is done, I will almost always not varnish it right away and will um, sit with it for a little while and sort of contemplate it and make sure that it is exactly the way I want it to be before I'll varnish it and sign it and put it, may it, put it in the gallery or whatever I'm going to do with it. So anyhow, I'm doing the, here I'm doing the same thing to the bottom of the wings that I did to the, to the top. I'm adding another layer of black over the top of the brown that I put on earlier. And now I'm adding some orange over the top of the yellow and the, doing it over the top of the yellow will make the orange more vibrant. And I really could have probably put white down for the spots and then put yellow over the top of them. But since I'm using an opaque yellow, I didn't really need to do that. But if you were using a transparent yellow, you definitely would want to put white down first and then put the yellow on top so that otherwise you won't be able to see the yellow against all that black. And I'm adding some little stripey details to the wings right there at the bottom there. A little bit sort of hairy or fuzzy looking. And now for the blue. This is my favorite part because it's like kind of plain, the yellow and the black, until you get this blue on there and then it just pops. It's so beautiful. This is a tiger swallowtail butterfly. I had to look it up, but it, yeah, and there's the little antenna. 
coming together now. And then I decided that I wanted to paint the background blue, so I went around the whole thing with blue. Um, I could do it either way. If you, I prefer to do the background before I put anything on top of it. I just find it's easier not to have to paint around stuff, but I've done it both ways. It really doesn't matter. Um, so anyhow, that is the sped up version. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching my videos. If you enjoy them, please subscribe and comment and like them and whatever else. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.